Yirashimase! Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot'em Up Saturday. And on the menu this Saturday, we have Super Hydra! A love letter to 16 and 32 bit shoot'em ups. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. From developer Mocha Molito with music by Grazor87 and published by Ablight Studios, Super Hydra is a remix enhanced version of the title Hydra. And I love it. This is a great shoot 'em up. I'll go and say that right off the bat. It definitely has my recommendation. So, what kind of modes do we have? Let's talk about that first. You have the ability to continue your previous playthrough. As you finish a stage, it'll save your game at that point. And that's a great thing. It's a relatively long shoot 'em up, so you're not committed to completing it in one playthrough, and that's awesome. So, you have the ability to play it in single player, or you can do local co op. And then we also have this uh, local co-op minigame. Your two robots with this laser tether between you, and you're trying to score as many points as possible. The options are relatively bare bones. You have some nice filters if you're looking for that CRT scanline look. But that's largely it. So, let's get started. There are some voiced cutscenes and some voice throughout there. We're Delta Lance taking on the uh, Meropian forces. Let's talk a little bit about what we can go do. So we can move our ship, of course, and we also have a main shot. There's a secondary shot as well, but we need power to uh, be able to fire that. And the power we get from these cycling power-ups. So they cycle between the energy, which is, of course, the power-up energy. Also, the blue is speed up, and then the S is for shield. There are also these little gems that certain enemies drop. They'll show up in two colors uh, once we actually gain our secondary weapon. We don't have a secondary weapon in the first stage, so the only one will show up is the green gem for our main weapon. And they'll actually cycle back and forth between green and red, so you don't have to worry too much about getting one drop or the other. You just will have to be careful about which one you pick up. And that covers the basis of the game itself. So now we also have, we can start talking about some of the other things that are awesome about Super Hydra. So as you can go and see right off the bat, Super Hydra is a horizontally scrolling shoot 'em up that definitely has a 16 and slash 32 bit uh, feel to it. And it's a really kind of a throwback to those greats of the era, like uh, Gradius 3, for example, as well as Axley, and all those type here. In fact, this boss gives me a lot of Gradius vibes. We have some decent power right now, though, so we just need to get enough shots in the eye, and bam! That's stage one. So as we complete each stage, we get a reward at the end, which is usually a new weapon, sometimes it's an extra life, it depends on which stage you're playing. So that's actually our first secondary weapon. And as we complete the stage, it saves the game, and bam! We go and see the galaxy, or our, rather our game map, in all of its gloriousness. There are 21 stages total in Super Hydra. It's a really long shoot 'em up But as you can see, it's multiple path. You don't have to go and play all the stages in a single playthrough, but you can. So it makes it different from something like a Darius that way, where a Darius, you do have multiple paths, but once you take a path, you're committed, and you can't go back to previous stages. In this one, you can, and it's actually a really important feature that you can go back and play previous stages. So in addition to having this glorious map, we'll move on to our second stage, we have our weapon select. And this this one I love. It just gives me so many good Axelay vibes. And I love that. So we gain weapons throughout the course of completing stages, and we'll get the six total... Throughout the course of your gameplay, you can get six total main weapons. Right now we only have the railgun, so we'll go with that as a standard military weapon. We've got seven secondary weapons, we now have the bombs, so of course we'll equip those, and five special weapons that take the energy to use. Right now we just have the missile. Powerful if it hits an enemy. Cyclades Liberation. So here we have some great little pixel art of our allies getting the heck out of dodge so they can survive. And this stage itself has a lot of really great pixel effects, so go ahead and keep your eyes out for that. 
Also, since we have a secondary weapon, we'll go and see that the weapon power-up gems will now sometimes appear red when we first see them. But they will cycle back and forth, just like the other power-ups. Where we do have a fully powered main weapon, though, we'll want to get the red ones as much as possible. Here's another really neat uh, touch to this stage. All these structures, we can destroy them, but there are allies building, so if we destroy them, we take a point penalty. It's not something we want to do, you know? Going around, destroying people's houses, that's not the kind of uh, shoot 'em up pilot we are. Well, maybe we are. So, as far as the weapons are concerned, I didn't mention this, but there are two levels you can power them up. So if you collect five, you'll power it up to level two, basically. And if you collect three, then you'll power it up to its final level three. Here we come to the sub-boss of our second stage, and he can kind of be cheesed, where once we destroy the top of his nodes, we can just sit on top of him and drop bombs. But, well, it's great that the game gives us the option to do that. We just have to be careful not to take the final shot from that, and I wasn't, so we lost our shield. So here we have these really neat bats that we can shoot off the walls. It's like they don't really do much to us, so we can just let them survive, but it doesn't seem like we get much benefit from that. There's some ground enemies that will fire spikes or thorns, whatever you want to call them, at us. And then we get to the point where the stage opens up and we could go the high route or the low route. Uh, I chose the high route because it gives us the ability to get to this power-up a little bit faster. Unfortunately, I died. And we can see that the game has a checkpoint system. So each time you die, you lose a couple levels of your both primary and secondary weapons and you'll lose one each of your speed and special weapon power if you've collected any. But the game is decently generous with power-ups, so if we're careful, we can at least get our weapons back up to strength, if not necessarily a shield and weapon power. So, right here, like I said, if the upper path gives us an easier access to that power-up, which allows us to have a shield once more, and we can proceed through with completing the stage. So, although there are speed power-ups, I feel like Super Hydra has a decent base speed for your ship. There are certain situations where having more speed will be helpful, yes, but you can survive even if you're at lower power. And that's something that's important to note. You'll definitely have an easier time of it with higher powered weapons and a faster ship, but you're not doomed if you take a death and have to start further back in the stage with a weaker ship. Um, you, if you die on a boss, you will continue to continue on that boss, so you could potentially see your power dropping quickly if you lose lives against a boss. Here we have our, speaking of bosses, we have the second stage boss. This guy's really neat, but we have to be careful. He's got two main attacks. He drops rocks on us like that, and then there's that wave of lasers he sends. So, some neat effects here. As we continue to damage this head shield, we'll see that it takes damage, and eventually it'll destroy or it'll get destroyed. And then we have this tongue that's flicking these red orbs at us. And watch the beautiful pixel effects when we destroy those red orbs. This game is full of beautiful... Well, <laughs> I'm not sure if you can call that one as beautiful. But the game is full of beautiful pixel effects. They're really, really well done. Really, if you're a fan of pixel art like this one, can't I can't recommend it enough. And also, great explosions. So another thing to note though, if you destroy a boss, you still have to be careful of any weapons that happen to be, or any shots that happen to be on screen, as until you've actually left the screen, you can still take damage, so you have to definitely be careful of that. We can pick up our new weapon, which is a wide shot. Oh, I also forgot to mention, 
you'll have a performance indicator there based off of how many hits or lives you went and lost. And it also indicates what your rank is based off of your score. So I got a poor performance on that stage. Took too many hits, that's my bad. The best I've gotten is very good. I'm not sure if it's possible to get more than that. So here's where the game starts to branch. And we could continue just along one path without hitting all the stages, but like I said, you can go back and play the other stages and you'd really want to to get all the weapons. So we'll hop into uh, Orbital Tree, and really, between the Wide Shot or the Railgun, uh, Wide Shot might work for this one. Bombs and Missiles. And that basically is Super Hydra served up for your enjoyment. There's a ton here though, so I'm only really touching the tip of the iceberg on it. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw in some video of some of my other like uh, favorite stages. So when you attack the Meropian fleet in open space, that I love, love that stage. You've got this massive fleet battle going on. At the start of it, you see other fighters taking off, and then you've got your capital ships exchanging fire with the enemies. There's enemies like dropping onto them. I love that feeling that you're not alone in these space battles, that you're part of a bigger whole. Then there's also ones where you're attacking like ground-based tanks, that there's just a little, a little feeling of speed. You know, it's not like Sonic the Hedgehog or anything, but like once again, it's just so well crafted and gives you that feeling that this game truly is a callback to those great era of 16-bit shoot-em-ups. So if there were any minus flavors that I would give Super Hydra, it's that it does use a checkpoint system for single player. I'm and that that more than anything isn't really a criticism, more as it's just my personal preference when it comes to shoot 'em ups. As far as like plus flavors though, you've got the beautiful sprite art and all the effects that the game uses. There's so many small little details throughout the course of the stages. It's really, really well done. It also has a great soundtrack. And then it's so well crafted. It doesn't seem as haphazard as the bullet hells, which are so much more common in today's shoot 'em ups. So I can really appreciate it for that. So overall, how does Super Hydra taste? It has a great taste, and I heartily recommend it to anybody that's a fan of classic shoot-em-ups. If titles like Axelay and Gradius were your jam, then you owe it to yourself to play this game. Alright, that'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot'em-Up Saturday. I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me. And, as always, I look forward to seeing you again next week.